Our background building libraries are a fantastic way to quickly add procedural architecture to your scenes. Each library features 13 parametric buildings optimised to fill in the mid to background of images with many adjustable parameters to customise them to suit each project. Here's how they work. First of all, you need a spline to define the footprint of the building. For this example, we'll keep it simple and create a rectangle about 20 metres along each side. Next, go to the Create panel and create a new rail clone object by dragging an icon in the scene. Go to the Modify panel, open the Style rollout and click the button to open the library browser. Find a building you wish to use, select it and click Import. Once the style's loaded, just go to the Base Objects rollout Pick Footprint Spline from the list, and then click the Item Picker button and select the Closed Spline from the scene. That's it. You now have an instant building. So the great thing about this library is that you can create buildings with any shape or size of footprint in just a few clicks. For example, in this scene I have some splines with more interesting shapes. As you can see, I just need to pick these from the Base Objects rollout, and a building is created to match that footprint. You can even assign a shape with several subsplines to create multiple buildings all at once. When creating these splines, it's helpful to know that a corner or a bezier corner vertex will create a sliced corner, whereas a smooth or bezier vertex will create a continuous curved facade. OK, so now we know how to create a building and control the footprint, let's take a look at some of the parameters that allow us to customise the structure and the materials. So the next most important settings are the two parameters that allow you to control the height. The Stories parameter is pretty self-explanatory. It simply lets you enter a fixed number of floors. In tandem with this though, the Stories Variation setting allows you to set a value to add or subtract a randomised number of floors either side of this fixed value. So this is really useful when you assign a building to a spline object that has many subsplines. Each building gets a random height based on the stories and the story variation settings, allowing you to create some really nice randomization, as you can see here. So several of these presets have additional parameters to control the number and the spacing of building elements. For example, let's open a new library and import the Barcelona preset from Building Library 2. I'll assign it to a single simple spline to illustrate. Now this particular style has three additional parameters to control the building. The X vertical count parameter allows you to specify how many X shaped diagonal braces appear on each building vertically. If you set this value to zero, then they'll be added automatically so that a taller building will get more braces than a short one. Similarly, the X horizontal count parameter allows you to specify how many X shaped diagonal braces appear on each building's facade horizontally. And just like before, if you set this value to zero, then they'll be added automatically so that wider facades have more braces than narrow ones. The second facade offset option allows you to control the distance between the outer and the inner facades. Using these three parameters gives you a high level of control. So not all styles have these options and some have very different parameters, but in every case, they're pretty self-explanatory. You should feel free to experiment. So in addition to the structure of the buildings, you're also able to choose from a wide variety of different materials. Each component of the building is listed separately in the parameters rollout alongside a numeric value that determines the material that's being used. To see a list of the materials these numbers actually refer to, just click on the question mark icon. A PDF that comes with this library also has previews of all these materials. By changing these values, you can easily customise the building to suit your requirements, and even reuse the building multiple times with different materials to help disguise repetition. So in addition to being able to pick a specific material, these parameters also have two special settings. If you change any material value to zero, it will randomly select a material from the list for each subspline. This is really useful for quickly creating large areas with automated variation. To demonstrate, let's set all these values to zero, and assign the building to an object with many subsplines. Hit render and you'll see each building now has a randomised height and materials. Another special value is used if you want to assign your own materials. If you set any material value to minus one, it fixes the material ID to a known value. To find out what that value is so you can build yourself a multi-sub material, just click on the question mark. The first sentence tells you the material ID assigned to the component. 
Here, for example, we can see that the main facade material is assigned to ID1. Using this, it's relatively straightforward to create and assign your own multi sub object materials if you require. Next up, we'll look at the limit material ID options. This is used in those situations where all your footprints are contained in a single spline, but you wish to assign buildings to specific subsplines. To use it, just set it to a value. I'm using two. Then assign the building to a spline with several subsplines, and then assign the same material ID to each subspline that you'd like to generate a building. So here I'm just changing about half of them um, to material ID 2, and I'm going to leave the others at material ID 1. So you can do this with any style loaded from the library, allowing you to add several types of building to a single spline object. I'll add another to illustrate. So create a new rail clone object and load a different style from the library. Now I'm going to go to the parameters rollout and change the limit value to 1. And if I assign this to the same spline, and the buildings will be applied to all the remaining empty subsplines that we left from before. Now finally, let's take a look at the last parameter, which is called inside lights. This setting turns on and off the lights inside the buildings, which can be really useful for night renders or for more, a more realistic look on the shadow side of buildings in daylit scenes. Here you can see the effect of turning this setting on and off for a daylit scene, and by changing the light mix even more radically, we can see the difference this makes in nighttime scenes. The windows of several of the presets also have a randomized light color, values, strength, and in many cases, even random blinds or curtains. So that's it. As you can see, we've designed these presets to be easy to use with all the necessary parameters exported to the modify panel, so there's no need to open and understand the graph view. We hope these two libraries will save our users many hours filling in the backgrounds of their renders. Don't forget that each library also includes an all-in-one preset that creates a grid of buildings with fixed footprints that's ideal for those times when you just need some simple buildings quickly without having to worry too much about the size and the layout of the footprints. We have a separate tutorial about this that's well worth checking out.